Hi, Kat. Thanks for uh, joining my tech talk. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so we have Kat here, Kat Pazella with Heartland, and she is our resident uh, PCI compliance expert, credit card processing, um, subject matter experts, and um, it's a great partnership for Pulse One because we can have our infrastructures, our clients' infrastructures secure, but if our credit card processing is not, and the software and the technology that's uh, integrated with that, if it's not secure, it's an open, open door, hole in the boat. So can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what is PCI compliance or PCI DSS and why is it so important? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I should probably start with, uh, it stands for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. Mm -hmm. um, and if you take one word away, it would be the word security. Um, to be honest, it was not something that I ever really had to discuss on my appointments with my customers. Now it's part of the discovery process. Um, if I don't bring it up, if I don't stretch the importance of PCI compliance, my customers doesn't think believe it's a big deal. So um, it's a change that I had to make and that I talk to every merchant about. Got it. Yeah, it's important. You know, a merchant's business depends on their reputation and their integrity. And by being compliant, um, you know, they're not only protecting themselves, but they're protecting their customers' card information. So if a breach would happen, um, it can have severe consequence consequences for a business. So the statistics show, and you and I have spoken about this many times, that I believe it's 71% of small and medium-sized businesses are being targeted. Totally. Uh, yeah, so it's really important. Yeah, and yeah, we're not the the IT company. The IT department aren't the ones to uh, set up or uh, validate, make sure that that compliance and that security is there. It's the credit card processor that has to be there, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. Cap, yeah. talk to me a little bit more. If a merchant does not validate their compliance, what does that mean? to a customer. Right, so well, all businesses that process credit cards or store credit cards are required to validate that compliance. If they don't do so, um, you know, the merchant's putting their business at risk and their customers. I so, there are, so there are credit card processing companies that are not PCI DSS compliant? Yes, and there are, a lot of processes that just don't make it a big deal. You know, they they don't remind their customers. Um, and it's just, that's just too much uh, risk here that we can't ignore this. So identity theft is the fastest growing crime in the US. Mm. And I believe it was a hundred million Americans have already had information that's been compromised. So these cyber criminals are becoming very sophisticated. Um, yeah, and the consequences of a breach are severe and people are not realizing, you know, fines are steep, but it's not only monetary. Um, you have a great risk of losing loyal customers. Um, the majority of consumers say that if a business has had a security breach, that they're less likely to shop there again. Yeah. And you can probably add to this, you know, if a business has been breached once, how can they protect themselves going forward? Well, one of the scariest statistics is you do get a um, security breach. You literally get on a warm lead list for the bad guys and they never leave you alone for the rest of your life. They get all, all your personal information, business information, and they keep 
trying to get you forever. That's and that's so scary. <laughs> and so preventing it the first time, highly recommended. Yeah. So what do you guys, what do you guys do to help keep your clients um, compliant? Well, so uh, as like, it, yeah, it's part of the, well, it's part of the onboarding uh, process. And then within seven to 10 businesses, um, a merchant will receive an email to set up a username and password and go in and validate that compliance. Um, I usually also send out reminders just because people tend to procrastinate and um, forget about it because they're busy. So uh, we send out these reminders. Um, some customers only have to take an annual questionnaire and mm -hmm. some customers have to do a quarterly scan. It just depends on how you pro how they process their credit cards. Um, but it's honestly a continual process for the business to maintain compliance. Um, so it's really, it's not just something you do once a year and forget about it. Right. What I'm seeing a trend in your industry is everything getting offsite from the client. It's more going towards it's your cloud, it's your technology. Um, to where in the years past they would have the software installed on their local servers or even their cloud servers but is the trend now is to get that over into your environment and your security right right so we have depending on how the merchant process we have um, what we call our heartland secure devices which comes with um, a breach warranty already and Basically, when it's a um, say it's a face to face transaction at a retail or a restaurant um, and they insert that chip card, the chip itself is uh, an extra form of security. So since the chip really started um, taking off in the US, it was around 2015 that we had the liability shift. Um, we actually saw a, a big decline in face to face fraud. So the chip is an extra form of security and it basically tokenizes the data. So it is invisible to outside people. Um, so our Heartland devices, uh, it's encrypted. And when they, when the customer is going to do their PCI compliance questionnaire, it's also an, a shortened questionnaire because they're using a Heartland secure device. So I believe the mm. standard questionnaire is about 130 questions. I think when you use a Heartland Secure device, you'll have about 30 questions to answer. 100 less. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kat, how often does a merchant um, need to validate their compliance? The validation is an annual uh, questionnaire. However, depending on how the business process credit cards, there may be a quarterly scan needed. Um, but honestly, it's a continual process to make sure businesses stays uh, compliant. Right. Do you guys have a solution for companies with e-commerce? Yes, we do. So um, our we have developed uh, our secure submit gateway, which is uh, it has a plugin to the majority of the platforms out there. Um, it's also tokenized. It has advanced fraud settings. Um, so it's just very important when a company uh, starts an e-commerce uh, website or anything with a shopping cart to make sure to ask about uh, tokenization and mm -hmm. encryption. Yeah, and you guys have um, you guys have some sort of guarantee that you're uh, and you're pretty confident you guys aren't going to get breached and hacked. <laughs> Yes, that's why when uh, customers using our encrypted devices, that uh, they it comes with breach warranty. Got it. Got it. So, Kat, are there tips that companies uh, can take that you guys recommend? Absolutely. So, tip number one: you know, reduce where payment card data can be found, meaning 
the best way to protect against data breaches is not to store card information at all. Obviously, that's not always um, possible, but avoid writing card information down. Instead, enter it directly into secure terminals. Um, we also have uh, payment pages that we customize to businesses that they can either email a link to their customers or just direct them to the payment page and the customer will enter their own information. Uh, another great tip is use strong passwords. Uh, the use of weak password is one of the leading causes of breaches for businesses. So um, if you want to have a password that's effective, it has to be strong. And I know people do not like to hear this, but it has to be updated every 90 days. Yep, 100%. Yep. Same recommendations we have. Yeah. Um, I actually would like to maybe tip number three, you can talk to, um, you know, keep software patched and up to date. Yeah, so that's a big um, proactive maintenance um, technology that Pulse One has invested a lot of resources in, uh, making sure that all your applications, your operating systems are patched and up to date are, is, is absolutely critical and hardware too. So that how the bad guys get in is the firewalls, the servers, the applications, the software, the databases, all that. Um, if you are not maintaining those, it's not if, it's just when, when you're gonna get uh, a cyber attack. So we, we really pride ourselves. We have a whole team dedicated 24 hours, seven days a week dedicated, and that's all they do is patch software, operating systems, hardware. Uh, it's a big deal in our um, industry. So yeah, uh, definitely agree. Nice. Um, tip number four, we've kind of covered this already. Use strong encryption. Again, in our face-to-face -face environment, you know, EMV, which is the chip on the little card, is crucial. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you're looking to build a website with a shopping cart, make sure the shopping cart is using proper encryption. Yep, yep. And tip number five is choose trusted partners. And this is where I feel like um, this is a valuable relationship. You know, it's critical one to make sure your service providers are PCI DSS compliant and meet all the requirements. But uh, <clears throat> my customers trust me and they trust who I recommend to them. Yeah. Um, so this is it, this is this is val valuable for sure. Great. Yep. Super valuable for us. We don't we don't do everything right. Exactly. We do our we stay within our swim lanes and we rely on those uh, uh, trusted partners for sure. Definitely. Well, thanks, Kat. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me.